That's contextualization of the worst sort. Okay, hold the phone, Henrietta. This is Wretched Radio. Jimmy, correction accepted. During the break, you said, what about Stephen Colbert? He did use the name Jesus. He did. Mm Mm-hmm. He said he hoped he had a sense of humor. Uh, and Stephen Colbert employed his sense of humor to talk about, apparently, the Christian faith, according to folks who believe this is a stellar example of contextualizing the gospel so that it's palatable for people. See, that's the issue right there. That's the deal right there. We, air quotes, contextualize so that people can understand what we're saying That's called communication, not contextualization. Contextualization is a big movement inside of evangelical Christianity that says you've got to look like the culture, talk like the culture, act, smell like the culture, present things like the culture, and dull down the sharp edges. You see that practiced in many megachurches around the country, that you see a pastor who looks super groovy, his shirt is untucked, he's really cool, they play 80s music, they've got a fog machine. That's contextualization of the worst sort. And that is alive and well in evangelical Christianity. And recently, Stephen Colbert asked about his faith. He responded in a way that we are now told is the way to do it. This is the way to be winsome. Jimmy, thanks to you, I decided to go back and listen to when Stephen Colbert used the name of Jesus. Now, mm-hmm. normally you'd probably roll your eyes if you happened to be in a hotel with a broken clicker and this was the only channel on and you're actually watching the Colbert program. But this is supposed to be what it means to be a Christian. According to Tim Keller, this this is, this is our example. Now listen to what he says. I, I missed this the first time. He makes a joke about Christians being the only ones going to heaven. I think ultimately, us all being mortal, the faith will win out at the end. (laughs) Ha 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 ha. Well, the, the reality, sir, is that we do. And I wouldn't present it as a ha-ha joke, like, you know, aren't we pathetic people? (laughs) I actually think we're the ones going to heaven, aren't we? Go ahead and laugh at me. No, I think that that should be presented to say, here's the reality. Jesus Christ wins. And if you have not been brought onto his team, you lose. That is speaking truth. This is making fun of the faith. But I certainly hope when I get to heaven, Jesus has a sense of humor. There it is right there. Because... Stephen doesn't have an understanding of grace and mercy and forgiveness, but he's not our issue. Instead, Tim Keller saying this is the way the Christians should be reacting. Quote, it's a skillful example of how to be a Christian in the public square. And maybe that's because he didn't say anything explicitly Christian, frankly. But Tim Keller very helpfully tells us there's a reason you should be like Stephen Colbert. Six reasons you should contextualize as a Christian. Here comes number two, because Paul contextualizes in his speeches. Confer how he presents Bible believers in Acts 13, blue-collar pagans in Acts 14, educated pagans in Acts 17. So in other words, he changed how he presented things. First of all, that's an assumption. We need to remember that Paul's words truncated. It certainly wasn't his entire presentation. The writer of the book of Acts wanted to make a point by telling that particular story. Because remember, Paul did a lot more stuff that isn't included in the Bible, and they just wanted us to hear this part. And so we hear Paul say the message differently. And if you want to argue that he contextualized it so that people of different groups can get it, I have no problem with that. It, that's not the, but what Stephen Colbert did isn't even remotely what Paul did. Paul spoke the truth. I'm here to proclaim to you, you worship this God that, well, just kind of your, your, your dish basin God to be a catch all. I'm going to tell you who it is. That that's proclaiming the gospel. Paul got stoned for it. 
He got beaten for it. We shouldn't try to have that be the end result. But the effort to contextualize so that mm, the world just laughs with us, at us, because of us, and loves us to pieces, uh, those who live godly in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. But third reason for contextualization, according to Tim Keller, because the biblical writers contextualized. See John's use of Greek philosophy's logos in John 1. I, again, I, yes, he did that. Can we do that? I, I go to a foreign land, and they have a word that helps to describe justification. Am I going to use that word? Probably. Is that contextualizing? And the answer is, it depends on how you define contextualization. Because once we use that word to describe what Paul did, what John did in the Bible, that opens up the door to all kinds of shenanigans. And just a license to, hey, look, we don't ever want to like offend anybody. We want to be winsome Christians. Fourth reason that Tim Keller believes that Stephen Colbert hit it out of the park because Paul calls for contextualization without compromise in 1 Corinthians 9, 19 through 23. If you have your Bible, please open it up. Please remember the context before I'm even turning there to feverishly find our passage. Please remember Paul's purpose in writing this. It's sectarianism that is going on. That always needs to be in view. Every single sentence you read inside of the book of 1 Corinthians, he's writing to correct their divisions. So with that, let's get to 1 Corinthians. What did he say? 1, 9, 7. No, I'm not. 9, 19 through 23. 9, 19 through 23, said the preacher, repeating it because he can't actually find it himself. Here we go. 9, 19. I found it eventually. For though I am free from all men, I have made myself a servant to all, that I might win the more. And to the Jews I became as a Jew, that I might win Jews, to those who are under the law as under the law, that I might win those who are under the law, to those who are without law as without law, not being without law toward God, but under law toward Christ, that I might win those who are without love. Was Paul saying... It just doesn't matter what you, as long as it's acceptable to the hearers. That's not what he's saying. But that is what is being promoted with contextualization. I believe this is just a flat-out misuse of this verse. It is not what Paul is saying. To help somebody understand, a Jewish person knows the law. You can use the laws of Moses. That's why he reasoned with people from the Scriptures that the Messiah had to die and rise again from the dead. He also did that, incidentally, in the marketplace. We bring the Bible because it's the sword. It's the thing that cuts and works, and it does the convicting work because it's inspired by the Holy Spirit, whose job is to convict sinners of sin, righteousness, and judgment. But the fifth reason, Tim Keller would say Stephen Colbert is our new example, because the incarnation itself was a kind of contextualizing so we could understand the word made flesh. When I first read these from Tim, I was like, I know something's up. Something is off here. And I really had to think it through because what he's describing actually happened. Furthermore, John Calvin said that God prattered to us in the old. He spoke to us through stories. He spoke to the Jews through historical events, teaching them a little something about himself, baby talking. That's true. But if we say that's contextualizing, therefore, on the other end of the spectrum of the contextualization definition is Stephen Colbert, hoodwinks and shenanigans in the church, then I say, no, you're, then you're just, your observations aren't entirely inadequate or inaccurate. I think the First Corinthians 9 certainly was, the Colossians 4 certainly was, but I, those things happen. Yes, Paul if you will, he altered his strategy to a degree going in, although we're told very clearly in Acts 17, 1 through 4, what his strategy was. That's not contextualization, meaning bringing a fog machine to your church. Sixth, keep in mind you can't and shouldn't say everything every time when bearing a public witness to your faith. In Acts 17, Paul spoke of judgment, but not the cross. Well, there was a reason for that. They hauled him off. Furthermore, 
we didn't get to hear the entire sermon. I, I don't know what, if you read the sermons that are, are located inside of the book of Acts, and there are many of them, Christ, 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 he reasoned with them from the scriptures that the Messiah had to suffer, die, and rise again. It was always about Jesus Christ to Felix, to everybody. It was about Christ. And so the word contextualization is, in my estimation, a word that is being abused and used in order to justify a lack of courage, a lack of belief in the power of the Word of God, a willingness to look like a fool for the sake of Jesus Christ. That alone should just contradict this new definition of contextualization. Paul didn't work on it, so he didn't look foolish. He was foolish. Why? Because he preached Christ and him crucified, period. And that is what we should be doing, too. And until tomorrow, go serve your king. If you would like to see the entire episode of the snippet you're watching and perhaps check out my piano chops, simply visit wretched.org. Um, Houston, I think we have a few problems here. Go ahead, Wretched One. Besides the fact I'm wearing a cardboard helmet, Houston, you have got one of the biggest false teachers in the universe. Are you kidding? He is so rich. Uh, how rich is he, wretched one? <laughs> I can see his house from here.